Good morning and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church, where we welcome people of all races, abilities, and all people of goodwill. I am Tony Kubian. Donna Larkin Moore and I will be your worship associates this morning. Sheehern Kubian will read our chalice lighting. Our music will be provided by world renowned pianist Forrest Howell, and hymns will be led by the best tenor in the choir, Keith Ensroth. We also have terrific technical support from Jane O'Neill, and our Zoom greeter is Mary Jo Ebert. BUC worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on our website and Facebook. Social justice is an essential component of our church life. BUC is a welcoming congregation, a designation that means we are committed to being intentionally inclusive of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals and families. BUC is also a green sanctuary congregation which is a similar program for environmental justice work. We are taking action to address the climate crisis. We are also deeply committed to addressing racism within ourselves and in our world. We believe that black lives matter. We celebrate our theological differences and encourage people of a variety of beliefs and philosophies to participate fully in the life of our congregation. Before the service begins, there are a few announcements highlighting events in the life of this church. For additional information about the opportunities for involvement here, you can check out our website at bucmi.org. And now for our announcements. We extend a special welcome to those of you who may be visiting us for the first time. We invite you to learn more about our church by joining us for virtual coffee hour. If you'd like to participate, please stay with us after the service ends and you'll be randomly assigned a small group. The Environmental Action Team invites you to learn more about how you can decrease your carbon footprint and hopefully have fun working on it with other BUCers. As part of the How Green Can You Go initiative, we will examine a carbon footprint calculator compare notes on what we found and consider more earth-friendly actions we might take now. Immediately after service today, Mary Dunn will present a brief introduction to this project. And then she and Izzy Kapoya will stay in the main meeting room during coffee hour to talk more about the project with anyone who is interested in participating. Join Reverend Mandy this Tuesday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live for our monthly Vesper service. This is a joyful yet introspective evening service that centers gratitude for the day that has passed and welcomes the night that is beginning. The service will include candle lighting in remembrance of your beloved dead and any concerns in your heart. Names and information for candle lighting can be submitted via the link on our website under worship links or shared in comments during the service. To view the service live, visit the Birmingham Unitarian Church Facebook page at 7 p.m. this Tuesday. The video will also remain on Facebook for later viewing. Next Sunday, March 7th, is Stewardship Sunday. Immediately following our worship service, please join us for a special All Ages Stewardship Kickoff event. This fun celebration will include an open mic opportunity for anyone to share what BUC means to them in this difficult time, as well as what it will mean for them into the future. You are invited to share what you love about BUC in whatever way you'd like, a one sentence statement, a song, a dance, or a two minute family, uh, two -minute family skit. We may not be able to enjoy the mimosas and quiche together like we usually do on Stewardship Sunday, but we'll still have a great time celebrating our community and we'll be raffling off prizes for those who fill out their pledge form that day. Watch your email or postal mail for your pledge packet and plan to join us after service next Sunday. Today our service will explore what Unitarian Universalism means to us. Thank you again for joining us this morning or whenever you're watching 
Although we are not physically together, we are together in spirit, and it is good to be together again. And with that, our service will begin. Chinese lighting is by Albert Schweitzer. At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lightened the flame within us. Our opening rhyme will be, gather the spirit, you are invited to sing along at home. in this light appear all the same. Gather him peace, gather him thanks, gather him sympathy now and then. Gather him hope, compassion and strength, gather to celebrate once again. Gather the spirit of heart and mind, seeds for the sowing are laid in store. Nurtured in love and conscience refined, with body and spirit united once more. Gather him peace, gather him thanks, Gather in sympathy now and then. Gather in hope, compassion, and strength. Gather to celebrate once again. 
gather the spirit growing in all, drawn by the moon and fed by the sun, winter to spring and summer to fall, the chorus of life resounding as one. Gather in peace, gather in thanks, gather in sympathy now and then. Gather in hope, compassion, and strength, gather to celebrate once again. Our opening words are Come, Come, Whoever You Are by Ian W. Riddle, Modified. Do you hear that voice calling you, calling us? That voice which calls us together here today in this Zoom, made holy by our presence and by the sacred breath we share in our singing and speaking and silence. That voice which calls us to remember that we are not alone and that we are inextricably linked to all other life, woven into a vast tapestry of existence of which we are a powerful, integral, and holy part. And just as we have been called together here today, we act as the voice, the heart, the hands of another call. The call to walk with the wanderers, sing and dance with the worshipers, proclaim the memory of those who have taken their leave, wrap the despairing and the broken in the arms of love and community, and hold the hands of all of us who have broken our vows and call us back again and again to the covenant of work and justice, humility, and steadfast faithfulness. For this, we are here today. So my friends, come yet again. Come, let us worship together. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. We are stewards of our community and of our beautiful campus. Even when we're not worshiping on site, there are expenses associated with maintaining our community and our campus that are ongoing, like keeping our parking and walkways plowed and salted in the wintertime. Many of you make an annual pledge to the congregation, and that is what we use to pay our bills. Your weekly offering is a way of recommitting to our mission and a way of strengthening the bonds between you and your fellow congregants. Please give generously as you are able. Contributions can be made using Venmo with username B-U-C-M-I through our website or by putting a check in the mail. However it is that you choose to give, please do so with a heart of gratitude and a heart of generosity. Thank you for your offering.
this is the time in our service when we pause recording to the one we call by many names. There are joys we want to celebrate. There are sorrows too tender to be spoken. In the midst of a pandemic, we extend good thoughts to all and we will do what we are able to support our individual families and our community. We will work to be patient, to be caring, to be loving. Amen. The hours of religion, which like sunshine goes everywhere. Its temple, all space. Its shrine, the good heart. Its creed, all truth. Its ritual, works of love. Keith, Keith. The hours of religion, which like sunshine goes everywhere, its temple all space, its shrine the good heart, its creed all truth, its ritual works of love. For my reflection, I'm going to talk about what Unitarian Universalism means to me. And in order to do that, I'll take you through a brief journey of me getting to UUism. Uh, like many of you, I was born and raised Catholic. I went to St. Christopher Grade School in Detroit. I was an altar boy for about four years. I sang in the choir for a year or two even though I'm sure my voice did not warrant it. And even though I even thought about becoming a priest, that is until I realized I liked girls and priests could not get married. I enjoyed many of the traditions, music, moral teachings, and the sense of community, but it all came with a great deal of dogma. One of the first major questions I could remember having as a young boy was, how could God welcome an uncaring or a bad person uh, who happened to be Catholic into heaven while not welcoming so many caring or good people into heaven because they were not Catholic? It didn't make any sense to me. Many things didn't make sense to me. And by the time I went to high school, I realized that I was done with the church. My parents weren't happy with me. I know that they were disappointed and I would guess probably a bit embarrassed because I was no longer going to church with them. I also felt judged by many others in my family, which really turned me off from all of religion for a very long time. Years later, my brother-in-law held a guitar recital at Gross Point Unitarian Church. Unitarian? I never heard of that before. So I picked up a brochure and I saw a description of a religion that I didn't know existed. Free and responsible truth, search for truth and meaning, shared values but no creed. I thought to myself that if I were ever to belong to a church again, it would be a Unitarian church. Well, years later, I finally shook off my negative religious feelings enough to try out Birmingham Unitarian Church. One of my first services was a youth service in which they shared their beliefs with the congregation. They were all very thoughtful and articulate. Some expressed a belief in God, some did not, and some were not sure. I was so impressed from that point on, I knew that BUC was my home and now it's home for my family as well. I'm so happy to be part of a church community that accepts me as I am and also challenges me to be better. To me, Unitarian Universalism is not a religion that will help me attain some type of 
eternal salvation. To me, UUism is a lifelong spiritual journey with other caring and questioning people, giving me the opportunity for salvation right here on earth. And that is what Unitarian Universalism is to me. When our children were six and two years of age, we, re <clears throat> we resided in beautiful San Diego. Some dear friends recommended we try a church, one that impressed them and offered exceptional music. When we arrived on Sunday, my spouse took our six-year-old to a class with her peers. I took our two-year-old to the nursery. The teacher explained that they were going to be making mud pies and learning what happened to the soil when it was filled with water. Would it be okay to remove some clothes? I said, of course. After the service, which we thoroughly enjoyed, my spouse collected our oldest and I went to the nursery. My two-year-old was completely naked and covered head to toe in mud, as were all the other children. They were having a marvelous time making mud pies and spreading the mud on each other. Cleaning off the mud was no easy task. After we piled in the car, my spouse and I discussed everything that happened that morning, especially our naked kid covered in mud. We decided right then and there that Unitarian Universalism was definitely worth exploring. When we lived in Montana, it was a 45 mile drive to the nearest UU church in Missoula, one lane each direction on a roadway that was often covered with ice for months at a stretch in the winter. We decided to check out a local congregational church. The sermons were excellent and the church was less than 15 minutes from our little log and stone house. Not being Christians, however, meant that it wasn't a perfect fit. When we moved to the magical Puget Sound region of Western Washington, we discovered there was a small lay-led UU fellowship on our island. We joined and soon became active. We helped bring a minister to our fellowship. We became a church and participated in more than doubling our membership. When we moved to Michigan and started looking for a new UU community, we spent some time on the net checking out every UU church within one hour. We knew we wanted a mid or large sized church. Even though BUC was an hour away, it was the only church that met our requirements. We began attending in the summer of 2013 and became members in December of that year. Because our UU faith offers us polity, the ability and the responsibility to select our own minister, it is a good fit. Because our UU faith has seven principles to which we can aspire, it is a good fit. And soon we may have an eighth principle. Our faith is growing and changing, changing for the better. It is a good fit. I want to share some words by David James Duncan in his book, God Laughs and Plays because it epitomizes why I am a UU. He writes, I still have no rational idea what it means when consciousness revs up and perceives mystery amid mind, amid life, amid matter. But oh, do I have images of what it means. <laughs> I can learn rational I cannot lend, he writes, rational credence to Annie Dillard's sense that perfunctiformity is helpful in sensing God. 
but I can lend a bit of beyond credence. If we are ever to arrive at new levels of consciousness or to the beauty that is truth, we've got to describe our perceptions as consciousness truly perceives them. I therefore confess my lifelong love for a wilderness found outside myself till once in a while I encounter it within. It's a wilderness entered, it seems, through agendaless alertness at work, rest, or play, in the presence of language, rivers, mountains, music, plants, creatures, rocks, moons, sun, dust, pollen grains, dots, spheres, galaxies, grains of sand, stars, every sort of athletic ball, cells, DNA, molecules, atomic particles, and immaterial forces. It's a wilderness that occasionally phallic clouds inside outs me, leading, and here he is referring to Pierre Tejard Desjardins when he says, leading to a Tejardinian burning and a Leopoldian harmony that leaves my mind wondrous happy, but far, far behind. It's a wilderness my trusty dog, reason, will never succeed in sniffing out or chomping up. Yet a wilderness I've been so long and gratefully assailed by that I've lost all but comic interest in the dog's endless hounding and suspect that even he begins to enjoy himself when the wilderness flips us inside out. I believe, based on phallic clouds giving birth to stars, spring storm clouds to snow, summer snowbanks to rivers, and strange orbs to trout. I believe, based on perfunctiform dots melting into vastest spheres, spheres dividing their way back into dots, lives collapsing into ashes and dust, and dust bursting back to life. I believe, based on spheric shapes, singing, dividing, creating cells, plants, creatures, creating my children, sunflowers, sun, self, universe, by constantly sacrificing all that they are in order to be reconfigured and reborn forever and ever that when we feel love's density, see its colors, feel its pulse, it's time to quit reasoning and cry, my God, thanks. If I stake my life on one field, one wild force, one sentence issuing forth from Sinai, it is this one. There is no goal beyond love. There is no goal beyond love. May it be so. Now, let's join with Keith and Forrest in number 311, Let It Be a Dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Let a dancing song be heard. Play the music, say the words, 
and fill the sky with sailing birds. Let it be a dance, let it be a dance, let it be a dance. Learn to follow, learn to lead. Feel the rhythm, feel the need. To reap the harvest, plant the seed. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you. Through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Everybody turn and spin. Let your body learn to bend. And like a willow with the wind. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. A child is born, the old must die. A time for joy, a time to cry. And as it passes by, let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you. Through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance. Morning star comes out at night. Without the darkness, there's no light. If nothing's wrong, then nothing's right. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let the sunshine, let it rain. Share the laughter, bear the pain. And round and round we go again. Let it be a dance. In our ecologically compromised world, in our world of social inequity, in our world of racial inequality, in our world that so often ignores the teachings of Jesus. You know, the guy who embraced the poor, blessed the peacemakers, cared for the homeless, the immigrants, the children. I am a Unitarian Universalist because we know that love is the goal. And we know we move at the speed of trust. Did you get that? I am a UU because we know that love is the goal. And we know we move at the speed of trust. So go out this coming week and spread some love. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. Thank you, Donna. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? I'm not coming on to the screen. Okay. Uh, we'll have a short announcement now for Mary Dunn about a um, environmental action group project here at BUC. Take it away, Mary. You're on mute, Mary. Thanks for the reminder. The BUC Environmental Action Team thanks the congregation again for your vote in May supporting the climate change resolution by a whopping 94%. Now we're offering steps to measure individual and family carbon footprints with an online calculator. Try options to lower greenhouse gas emissions and join BUC members and friends in March to share experiences, fun, and tips. You can stay right here to learn more about this with Izzy and me. Also look for details in the BUC March newsletter, Facebook posts, and weekly BUC email messages. Let's have fun and see how green can we go. 
Thank you, Mary.